Autocomplete is an awesome feature if you're looking for dynamic choices in your slash command options. This is helpful if your choices depend on a database with a lot of dynamically changing data or if you want to present choices from an external API. Surprisingly, this is also pretty easy to implement. So let's see how it's done. In this video, I have two dummy datasets, which I'll have linked down below in case you're interested. The goal is to create a pet selector slash command, which has two options. One is obviously the pet. The choices presented will display the name of the pet and its type. The second option will be the owner. It will also display the name and their city. To achieve this, we first have to create our slash command, of course. I'm using the command kit library to handle all my slash commands. So if you're interested, I'll have the starter files for this linked down below. So inside my commands folder, I'm going to create a new file called pet.js. Inside this file, the first thing that we're going to do is define the structure of our slash command. So for that, let's go ahead and import discord.js. And from discord.js, we're going to be importing the slash command builder class. And we're going to be using this to, of course, structure our slash command. So let's create a variable called data. And if you're using command kit, then this name is important. So we're going to set data to a new instance of the slash command builder class. And from here, we can start attaching methods to this. So the first thing is the name of the command. So we can say set name. I'm going to be setting this to pet. The description is going to be find a pet from a list of pets. Next, let's go ahead and add a string option. As I said, the first option is going to be our pet option. So this is going to be a string option. And let's now modify this option. So we can say option dot set name. And this option name will be pet. The description will be the pet to check. Then we also want to set required to true. Now, this is usually where you would finish your string option. However, what we want to do is add a new method called set autocomplete and set this to true. What this will do is it will register our slash command with this option. And basically it will tell Discord that this option is supposed to have an autocomplete feature. So every time the person starts to type, Discord will be sending our bot multiple requests with the content of the option. So for now, we're just going to be using this option. Later on, I'm going to show you how to handle multiple options as well. So now let's go ahead and create our run function. And once again, if you're using command kit, then this name is important. From here, we can destructure interaction and we can get our pet choice from interaction.options.getString. And this will be the name of the option, which in this case is obviously pet. Now, this pet choice is actually going to be the ID of the pet. So the way we're going to be setting this to an ID is something like we do with choices. So if you've ever worked with choices in slash commands, you'll realize that they have a name, which is obviously the text that shows up in the option. And then there's the value. This value is not shown to the end user, but instead this is used for development references. So most of the times the value is going to be the ID. In this case, value is going to be the ID of the pet. If I go to my pets.json, which you can just imagine this as like some sort of database, which has dynamically changing data. You may notice that we have a bunch of IDs and these are all unique. So we can obviously filter out a pet using their ID. Now in this example, obviously we're not using add choices. So we're going to go ahead and completely remove that. But what I'm trying to say is pet choice in this case will be an ID. So let's go ahead and deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and import pets. And this is going to be from the data folder. And we're going to be getting this from pets.json. Now let's go ahead and find our pet. So I'm going to say const pet equals to pets.find. And we're going to find the pet using their ID. So p.id must exactly equals to pet choice. And I think I should be calling this target pet ID since it's a more fitting name. Now let's go ahead and reply with interaction dot reply. And we're going to say pet pet dot name like so. Later on, we're going to be dealing with the owner as well. Finally, let's go ahead and export our data and the run function. Make sure obviously you're exporting it as an object. Now let's get to the main part of this video, which is handling our autocomplete. So the way you can do that is with an interaction create event listener. If you're using command kit, you can create an events folder and inside the events folder, you can create an interaction create folder. 
However, I want to keep this video as general purpose as possible. So I'm going to be doing this inside the index.js file, which is why I have completely excluded the events path as well. So right after the ready event listener, we're going to create a new event listener. So let's say client.on and this event name is going to be interaction create. We're going to get the interaction object as the parameter. And if you've been developing Discord bots, you may realize that there's multiple types of interactions. Slash commands are interactions, context menu commands are interactions, and we have a bunch more. Autocomplete is also an interaction. So before I actually write any code, what I want to do is I'm just going to leave it like so, and I'm going to start my bot. So in the terminal, I'm just going to say node dot. And back in Discord, I'm going to try to run the slash pet command. Now, as you can see, the pet has no choices, but it was actually waiting for a response from our bot. Now, we're not going to get any error in our terminal. That's because we're not really handling that interaction. So that's really the goal here. Within three seconds, we must respond to the interaction just like any other interaction. Now, as I mentioned at the start, we're using the ID. So if I basically put the ID one and send it, you're going to notice that we actually get a pet. However, we're going to be using autocomplete to help us with this. So let's go ahead and deal with our autocompletes. So the first thing that we want to do inside this event listener is to confirm that this interaction type is an autocomplete interaction. The way we can do that is we can say if interaction is autocomplete and this is a method, then we can do something with this interaction, obviously. However, I don't like the structure of this code because it's unnecessary nesting. This event listener is just for autocomplete. So I can just go ahead and negate the value and return if it's not an autocomplete. Now your autocomplete can be for multiple slash commands. So over here, let's go ahead and see what our slash command is. So we can say if interaction dot command name equals to pet, then once again, we can do something about this. And once again, I don't like this unnecessary nesting. So I'm going to set this to if interaction dot command name does not equal to pet, then I'm going to go ahead and return. So now let's go ahead and get the value that the person is typing in their option. So I'm going to say const focused option, or I think the correct name should be focused value. And we're going to set this to interaction dot options dot get focused. Let's go ahead and console log focused value and restart our bot and see what we get. So back in Discord, I'm going to go ahead and run the pet command once again. And over here, there's nothing. So if I go to my terminal, you can see that we have a blank string. If I start typing something, so like test, and I come back here, you can see that we have two interactions logged over here or two values logged over here with what we typed. So this is the basic idea. We have to respond based on the value that the person provided. So let's go ahead and deal with that. So to, of course, respond, we need our data set, which is going to be imported. So I'm going to say const pets, and we're going to import this from data and pets.json. Now we can use this inside our interaction create event listener. And over here, what we want to do is instead of returning all of these values over here, because there are a ton of values. Autocomplete in this case, allow a maximum of 25 values. So you can send a maximum of 25 options to the user to pick from and anything more than that, you will end up getting an error. So now let's go ahead and filter out choices that we can give to the user based on what their focused value is. So I'm going to say const filtered choices, and I'm going to be using pets dot filter. And for each pet, the condition is going to be pet dot name starts with focused value. Now this is fine, but this does not consider if the person is typing in lowercase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say pet dot name to lowercase. And this is a method starts with focused value to lowercase. So we're essentially converting both focused value and our pet names to lowercase and comparing them. Currently, filter choices is an array of objects, but it's not the object structure that we want it to be in. We want an array of objects that look like this. It's going to have the name, which is going to be shown to the user and the value, which once again is going to be the ID. So we want an array of these types of objects that we can send back. So let's go ahead and create a variable for that. And I'm going to call this results. 
And this is going to be filtered choices dot map. And for each choice, we are going to return an object. And this object will have the name. And this will have choice dot name, which is going to be the name of the pet. And we're also going to be putting a type. So I'm going to say choice dot type. And that's basically the type of animal. Next, we also want the value. And this is going to be the ID. So let's say choice dot ID. And by the way, both of these properties must be strings. So now we have an array of objects that look like this stored in results. If I hover over it, you can see that's basically what it looks like. However, these results may be more than 25. And as I mentioned earlier, you can only respond with a maximum of 25 options. So what we can do is when responding, so I can say interaction dot respond. And this is a little different compared to what you usually see, which is reply. As you can see, reply is not even available. So to respond to autocomplete, we must use the respond method. And we're basically going to respond with these results. So results. However, we want to limit it to just 25 options. So I'm going to say results.slice 0 and 25. Now, one more thing that I would highly recommend you do is add a catch method, which basically does nothing. And the reason I say this is usually when you have a ton of data coming in, it may be difficult to respond to all of them. And there's a good chance that some of your interactions may fail. So adding this will avoid your application from crashing. So let's go ahead and save our file and restart our bot. Back in Discord, I'm going to type something like, I'm actually going to leave it empty. And you can see we have a bunch of choices, but it is limited to just 25. So I'm going to start typing something like Milo. And as you can see, we have Milo with all the different types. If I click on one of them and I send it, well, we're going to get pet Milo. So pets work perfectly fine. But what if you have two options in the same command, which use autocomplete? We're going to be doing the exact same thing. So in our pet.js file, we're going to add another option. So add string option. Our option will have the name of owner. It will have the description of the owner of the pet set required to true. And once again, we're going to set autocomplete to true as well. Now inside the run function, we also want to add a section for the owner. So let's go ahead and import owner. So I'm going to say const owners require from the data folder owners.json. So down here, let's go ahead and define target owner ID. And this is going to be interaction.options.get string. And we're going to be getting the option owner. So let's go ahead and get our target owner from our data set. So it's going to be const owner equals to owners.find. And this owner, we're going to be finding it by their ID. So o.id must exactly equals to target owner ID. We can do the same thing over here. We can reply on a new line and we can say owner and we're going to say owner dot name. And I think we can also provide the city so we can say owner dot city. Let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to now move on to the index.js. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and restart our command. I actually want to show you one more thing in Discord, which is what happens when you start typing in the owner option. So let's go ahead and try with pet. And we have the pet. So we can just search Milo and it works. And if we go to the owner, we're still going to get all the pets. If we start typing, we're going to get options for our pets. However, if we choose any one of these, so we have Milo bird and Milo fish. And if we send it, we're actually going to get pet Milo and owner Ivy, the city Dallas. So obviously the reason for this is we're not properly handling different option autocompletes. In our code, what we're doing is we're just checking if the command name is pet. If it is, then whatever the option is, we're going to be responding just with pet values. However, that's obviously not the case. What we can do is instead of just getting the string, which is going to be this focused value right here, we can get an object which tells us what option is currently being typed on. So the way we can do that is inside the get focused method, we can pass in true. And now let's go ahead and console log focused value. I'm going to go ahead and comment out all of this code right here and save it. And I'm going to restart my bot. So back in Discord, I'm going to type slash pet. And over here in pet, I'm going to start typing test pet. 
And if I go to Discord, you can see that we have the value, which is test pet type three. That's basically the option type. And then we have the name, which is the name of the option. So if I go back and start typing in owner, so if I type tests and if I come back, you can see that the name owner has a different value now. So based on this object, we can now go ahead and respond with the appropriate values. So let's go ahead and close this and deal with it. So now that we're getting an object, I do think that it's more appropriate to call this variable focused option. And now let's go ahead and create an if statement. I'm going to remove this console log and I'm going to say if focused option dot name equals to pet. So over here, we want to deal with the option of pet. I can go ahead and take this code and put it inside. I'm going to uncomment this and I'm going to correct some stuff. So instead of focused value, it is focused option. And over here, since this is an object, we cannot directly compare it by saying to lowercase. We need to say focused option dot value dot to lowercase. This is where something like TypeScript would be really helpful. Anyway, that's really all there is for the pet option. Let's go ahead and save this and restart our bot. Back in Discord, I'm going to try the slash pet command once again. And we're currently getting autocomplete for the pet option. If I type max, then of course we have our pet options. However, if I go to the owner, we're not actually going to get any response. Three seconds have passed and, and our bot has not sent back any response. The reason for that is obviously we're not handling for it. So down here, let's say else if focused option dot name equals to owner. And now all the logic is basically the same. So we can copy this and instead of pets, it's going to be owners. So let's go ahead and import this. So I'm going to say const owners require data owners dot JSON. So inside the else if statement for owner, I'm going to say filter choices is going to be owners dot filter. And we're going to filter with each owner dot name to lowercase. And when we're sending back the response, we have their name, of course. However, they don't have a type. If we go to our data set, I think it's more appropriate to use their city. So let's go ahead and set choice dot city. The ID is perfectly fine. And that's really all there is. Let's save our code and restart our bot. So back in Discord, if I try slash pet once again, and we have options for pets, let's go ahead and type Milo once again. And I'm going to choose Milo guinea pig and owner. We now have a bunch of owners. Let's go ahead and search for, let's say, Paul. And we have just one Paul. So we can choose him and run our command. As you can see, we have pet Milo and owner Paul San Francisco. Awesome. Our autocomplete is working perfectly fine. So this is autocomplete with Discord JS. If you're having any troubles with your code, then be sure to join my Discord server, which I'll have linked down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.